Hey everybody, Mariko Kerr here, bringing you another episode of Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie, part 2. In this part, we are going to continue on with Treasure Trove Cove. Much, pretty much a very... I don't know, for me, it's kind of contr... Uh, I wouldn't say controversial, but uh, basically... One thing that I don't think a lot of people complain about um, in this in the Xbox 360 version that you know kind of rubs me the wrong way. But before we do, before we get into that world, let's talk to her. Yep, this is Brent, uh, Brent Tilda. Uh, pretty much the complete opposite of, uh, of Brent Tilda. Now, they, she mentions that she's her sister. And the thing is, Gruntilda has other sisters. The, uh, the ones that, uh, resurrect her in the, in Banjo-Tooie. Uh, I, I, I think one of them was, uh... Mill Tilda or something like that. Uh, but they never mention her again after this game. Not even in the I don't believe in the in the uh, even the Game Boy Advance port. Or not port, but uh, the Game Boy Advance game. Um, but anyways, what she does is that she basically gives you you know kind of like the true facts of Grun Tilda. Kind of sense. Uh, and they are kind of important if you, uh, by the end of the game. But I think I'll look into all the facts that she has for, uh, Gruntilda at the, uh, like, at some other point of the game. Ah, crap. Yeah, there's, uh, Snackers, I think his name was? Um. Trying to see if I can get that. There we go. I'll take the damage. Whatever. That, that uh, Jinjo is kind of oddly placed. I know the whole point is that, you know, you've got to get in there and get out before Snackers uh, takes a bite out of you, but I kind of put him in a bad place for me. Anyways, right here is where we're going to get the introduction to Red Feathers. What do they do? Uh, we'll explain it later, I guess. Or at least Bottles will try to when I'm, uh, if I don't explain it first gonna get some just ahead of time because I know he's not gonna give you a whole entire 100 of them when uh, you learn the move so I like to I'm one of those people here's the thing I want to ask are you that kind of person that uh, has like that somewhat of an OCD for uh, making sure that you're topped off on everything I mean it's obvious that you know you have no prob uh there's no problem with like being a little bit low on uh, ammunition on items on whatever but do you ever have that uh, moment where, like, you know, you could, uh, what do you say? That, uh, you need to top everything off. You need to get 100% full of, uh, of a certain equipment or item. And whenever you use up some of it, you need to, like, immediately, or not immediately, but make sure that you top it off uh, before you do anything else. Because that's pretty much me in a nutshell. I think in a sense, that's kind of like me when I, try, I need to refill a Robot Master weapon that I'm not going to even use uh, in a level, but I still feel like I need to uh, top it off um, just in case. Or I believe it's also in a... What was it? In Pokemon when you aren't going to need so many... Uh, uh, hyper potions or whatever, but you still feel like you need to top it off just in case. Or as long as, like, you have enough money for it, I mean. Because you never know. Anyways, we're gonna start off here with, uh, sad old Captain Blubbers. With his burping talk anim- uh, talk sound effect. Uh, 
Oh, this is something I, I, I... Sure, we'll find it for you. Maybe I should, uh, talk, uh, try to speak with everyone's lines, I don't know. But, uh, that's something I never understood. You're a pirate, you're a captain of a ship that sails on water, but yet you can't swim. That's, that's kind of a... That's no, no bueno, that's no good. Give me a sec here. Sorry about that. I got a phone call in the mi uh in the middle, and it's one that I just can't ignore. So I got I had to step away for a bit. Anyways, let's hop out. And we could give them one uh one right now, but I like to just get both of them ahead of time, so that way, you know, I don't have to listen to more of his, uh, constant blubbering. I'm sorry. Anyways. Now we have both his, uh, stacks of gold that apparently can, are sentient and can talk. I mean, pretty much almost every, everything in this game can talk, so. Like, even, uh, if, if the water could talk, it would. I've already forgotten how to use Talitrot. And good thing I learned very quickly. Anyways. We're gonna have Banjo where where's it go? There we go. The location where you have to stand in order to throw it is kinda weird. that we get our first jiggy we're already seven minutes in that's like, like I said that's how that's pretty much what's gonna be happening throughout this game is that it seems like we can get a lot quickly but sometimes it can also take a little bit longer in order to get everything Nipper here. He's gonna try to attack you first. We just it's pretty much just a game of wait for the opening and then just attack. There's nothing really difficult about this. Actually he was about to hit me there, but that was only because I hesitated for a second. Anyways, now that we knocked him out, we can go inside his shell. Just to find out that apparently we somehow vaporized him with the power of Kazooie's beat, because He's nowhere to be found inside his shell anymore. In fact, the only thing that's in here is just only more notes and two other uh, crabs in here. So, apparently, Kazooie has learned uh, vaporizing technology, apparently, because I, don't, I, I, don't, I can't really see any other way uh, Nipper would have disappeared out of his shell somehow. Or maybe it's one of those instances where maybe Nipper turned into two crabs. Like, you know, how like you can split an enemy into pieces, into uh, uh, into smaller versions of itself. Maybe Nipper turned into two, uh, two crabs. You never know. Anyways, now that we got that other puzzle piece out of the way, I think next we should try to go after the, tr the uh, sandcastle. Not before we talk to Bob's over here. Does Kazooie do it? My legs are tired. So now we learn the uh, shock jump ability. Basically, it's just a much bigger, uh, uh, high jump. The only thing is that it's only, uh, it's only used whenever you are, uh, on a pad, so it's not something that you can use all the time. Which is actually kind of good in a sense, because, you know, it's... A lot of people will probably be able to break the game using that. 
They were probably be able to reach uh, parts of air, uh, levels that they weren't supposed to until a certain point. If they gave if they if they gave them the ability to use the shock jump so early, or like not early, but like gave, gave them the ability to use it whenever they want. Anyways, if we climb up here and get this ginger real quick. I'm also just gonna get this one out of the way while we're here. Oh, he only gives you 25. Oh yeah, because that. Oh, and that's all the moves for this world. Um. Yeah, because I believe uh, feathers only give you um, 20. No, 50 uh, max to work with, where eggs was a total of uh, 100. I'm gonna wait for Bottles to stop talking. Because we have this little guy over here. Me, Leaky. That's not it. That's another thing I don't understand. How did a bucket, uh, just drain, drain that whole entire water. You know, I know this is a weird game. This, this, oh, this uh, game's world pretty much runs on, uh, on cartoon logic in a sense. But you know, sometimes some things need more explanation than that. But whatever. I want to get those notes before we go in. There we go. Now we can head into the sand castle. Before we do that, let's collect some more notes over here. Let's see, what's this puzzle? Mmm, I have no idea. Yeah, if only I had a hint. I'd rather have a hint than a time limit, though. Yeah, pretty much you just have to spell out Banjo-Kazooie. Not the most hard puzzle in the world. But it is if you, like, you're kind of scrambling to find the other letters. Okay... Where's A? Z... I think the other O is all the way down here. Yep. I and E. Done. That's true. Right. It would have been more interesting if they actually made that into a boss fight or something. Unfortunately, he's just he, he's just basically uh, a regular crab, but just with like I don't know plus two defense. Nothing really special there. Um, when I, at the beginning of this episode, I also mentioned how like you know not really controversial, but more like something that kind of rubs me the wrong way about this uh, in the Xbox 360 version. Apparently, you can't enter cheat codes without having uh, without having like repercussions for it, basically. Uh, in the N64 version, you could just put in a cheat code and nothing would ha and you get the the cheat would activate and nothing would uh, you know uh, bad or I guess you know punishment would be added to it. In the 360 version, apparently they added that you cannot you won't be able to save your game and uh, your game's high score will not be recorded after you use a cheat code. And they give you the option to, like, you know, not use a cheat code if you enter it, or just keep going with the cheat code, but, you know, all that stuff will happen. And that's something that kind of bugs me, because, like, it's, I, I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure if, uh, I never actually got the chance to try them out, but I don't know, because, like, what about the Cheeto, the Cheeto pages that you get from, uh, Cheeto in the game? 
uh, do they also count as cheats that you can't activate? Because they, you kind of actually work for them by finding him, uh, and, you know, taking the effort to actually find him and get the cheat code. Where, I can understand where it's like, cheat codes that, you know, actually kind of make the game, you know, more easier. I don't know, like, say, infinite health or infinite items and all that. But the Cheeto, the Cheeto pages would only, or not Cheeto pages, but the cheats that Cheeto gives you are just like cheats like, uh, you know, more eggs or more, uh, more, uh, feathers. And I also, and the thing is that I also get the, I also get that cheat or that, uh, message when I enter the cheat codes for the, uh, stop and swap. So, it also means that you can't activate uh, the stop and swap cheat codes uh, in the game. I believe... I believe, um... They autom... All, all the uh, stop and swap locations, like, activate if you link up or uh, have a save file of uh, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts in your system. I'm not exactly sure if that's the case or not. But that's kind of... That's kind of uh, annoying how, you know, you're, there's a repercussion for uh, for using cheats in a game. I mean, I under like I said, I understand if it's like a cheat if like you get uh, for a hundred uh, eggs or infinite eggs or whatever. But for cheats like, you know, I don't know, more, more eggs or uh, I don't know. At there's also cheats for like opening up worlds as well. But uh, I... I I just don't know what to say. I, I just feel like that option shouldn't have been added to the Xbox 360, or at least give the ability to like turn off, um, turn off the high. Because I feel like the main reason why they have that in is for the whole entire high score, um, submitting kind of thing. And if that's the case, why not just give an option to like turn off high score uh, submissions? So that way you uh, you can still use the cheats and not have to be punished by not being able to save your game afterwards. Because that kind of just means that, you know, if I put in a cheat code, uh, I won't be able to, uh, any progress I make uh, uh, any further will not be saved. That's kind of annoying to me. Anyways, we're going to continue on. I don't think there was anything in that treasure chest, I'm pretty sure. Oh, there was an extra life down there, but I believe that you get maxed off at 9, and we're already at 8, so I don't think it's any any problem, really. Um, yeah, let's do this one. Anyways, now that we have the ability to fly, this makes it pretty much very easy to do this uh, mission. I mean, you could do it by walking, but it's much faster if you take the uh, flight pads. Ah, I just missed them. I was going to try to see if I can grab them while it's still flying. Uh, let's see. Oh, missed it. There you go. Next one is right out here. But the thing, uh, uh, again, about that whole entire, like, link up with, uh... Uh, nuts and bolts and uh, Chewy to open up the uh, stop and swap locations. There's, there's, uh, what's it called? Shark Island, I think it was called? Hold on. Yeah, Shark Food Island. It's still, uh, submerged. So, I don't know what's going on with that, though. Anyways, we just need to get up here. And it looks like we're gonna have to end the episode off after this one. I think we got at least halfway done with the with the world, I believe. Ah, you'll never find me now. Yeah, you know what? I think I might. I think starting with the next episode, I'll actually start voicing uh, characters instead. I, it does kind of feel empty not act, uh, not act, uh, speaking for everyone. So I think I'll start with that. Okay, there's no way to open this thing up with regular tacks. You pretty much have to use a, a side, a side tackle. And with that... We got five jigsaw pieces. So yeah, we're about like halfway done with this level. So... 
as usual, if you like this part, subscribe to my videos, white right little button, give me a good thumbs up review down below this video, and check out my other parts if you like this one. In the next episode, we're going to uh, finish off with Treasure Trove Cove, and hopefully, uh, continue on with the rest of these worlds, and hopefully make sure that this Let's Play actually finishes. So, I will see you guys next time.